In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation, and as always, it's great to be with each and every one of you. So, as always, as we start off our conversation, let us invite Mary to be with us. Mary is the Mother of God. Mary is the Mother of the Church. Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. And when we pray that beautiful prayer, the Hail Holy Queen, we invoke Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So let's invite Mary to be with us, to pray with us, and to pray for us. to pray with us and to pray for us. As we pray the prayer that she loves most, and that prayer is the Hail Mary, also known as the angelic salutation. Together, <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now, my friend, let's invite to be with us our spiritual director. What a great privilege it is to have as our spiritual director the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has many wonderful titles. Holy Spirit is known as the Paraclete. Holy Spirit is also known as the gift of gifts. Holy Spirit is also known as the sweet guest of our souls. Holy Spirit is also known as our Consoler. It's also known as our Consoler. Holy Spirit is also known as our interior master. St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, expresses it <coughs> in these words, that we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans so that we can say Abba Abba which means daddy or father Abba which means daddy or father so let's ask the Holy Spirit to come to be with us to give us a lot of light in our intellect and the fire of divine love to burn within the very depths of our hearts. As we pray. The classical prayer to the Holy Spirit. The sweet guest of our souls. Together. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and then kindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. Thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful, by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Raphael, pray for us. <coughs> Saint Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. How true it is, my friends, the family that prays together, stays together. And a world at prayer is a world at peace. A world at prayer is a world at peace. So after praying with you, I'll be praying for you. And I'll be praying for you in the greatest of all prayers. And that prayer is the holy sacrifice to the Mass. No greater prayer than the holy sacrifice to the Mass. It is the prayer par excellence holy sacrifice of the Mass. And I'll offer the following intentions. The first intention I'd like to pray for will be that all of us would be open to the gifts <coughs> and the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps this can be our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come to the heart of Mary. My next intention, I'd like to pray for our, our own personal intentions related to our family. For the conversion, the sanctification, and the salvation of our family members. Let's also pray for this very important group of people. As our Lord says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Let's always pray, my friends, for the conversion and for the salvation of, of those who are dying today. That's right, for those who are dying today. So when I say Mass, that will be my intention. I'll be placing all of you on the altar. Going to our catechism, my friends, we're going through, at a snail's pace, the different sins against charity, which are against the first commandment. And today we've got the sin called asedia. It's, it's A-C-E-D-I-A. -A. That's the name of the sin. <coughs> and by asedia, it means... <coughs> Spiritual sloth goes so far as to refuse the joy that comes from God and to be repelled by divine goodness. How terrible that is, but how common that is. Just speak about that briefly. 
We see in the Acts the apostles, the apostles are suffering very much, but they, they have so much joy. So much joy in, in being with the Lord. So much joy because of their relationship with the Holy Spirit. So much joy. But this is the kappa. This is uh, one of the sins against charity. It's a uh, sedi is also known as spiritual sloth, or you like uh, laziness. When you go through the capital sins, the capital sins are gluttony, lust. Avarice, then sloth, sloth or ascetia. If you really look at it objectively, how ugly and absurd that is. So God, God wants to give you as a free gift one of His fruits that is joy, and you res you refuse joy. That's just absurd. But there are people that prefer to live in a state of almost perpetual sadness. And it's contagious. Let's, uh, let's pray that we would not give in to a, a sedia. And it's repelled by divine goodness to a very ugly manifestations. You don't want God's joy and you don't rejoice in the, the utter goodness of God. The utter, the utter goodness of God. <clears throat> so my friends, we're going through the, the five different sins against the virtue of charity, indifference, ingratitude, lukewarmness, and ascetia, and Tomorrow we'll go through the last of the five. Let's pray with St. Paul in his letter to the Philippians. He says, Rejoice in the Lord, I say, rejoice in the Lord. And this is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. And Nehemiah, may the joy of the Lord be our strength. And Mary, in her beautiful prayer, the Magnificat, Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Jesus appears to them, and it says they, they're <coughs> at first filled with fear, then they rejoice. So one of the most obvious signs of being a follower of Christ is, is joy. There's an acronym for joy, J-O-Y, and it's put Jesus first, others second, then yourself. You put last. There you have it. Jesus first, then others, and then yourself. There you have it. You put the Lord on the top. Then you seek a ways in which you can help out others. And then lastly, you think about yourself. So the I heard one for ego. Ego, it would be to edge God out. You like that one? Do you like it? So, if you edge God out, you kind of put God on the margin, you push him out. 
then you're not going to experience joy. Edging God out. Probably heard there's another acronym. <coughs> another acronym is ASAP. Now, everyone says as soon as possible, but there's another interpretation for that, and that would be always say A. I like to teach you acronyms. Do you like that one? Do you like it? That's a good one, isn't it? That's a good one. Start instead of as soon as possible. What you you know what you could do. You know what you could do is this. You can say as soon as possible, always say a prayer. How about that if you, you can connect the, the secular with the spiritual? And really that's what Jesus is challenging us to do. Jesus says, Jesus says in Luke, Jesus says in Luke chapter 18, Verse 1, Jesus says it's necessary to pray always and to never lose heart. This is another one I like. Is uh, It's God's riches at Christ's expense. This I got from Adrian Rogers. What is grace? Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. These are all helpful word devices called acronyms. Carmen has placed another one that we've learned in time. <coughs> Ask. Ask and you'll receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Whoever asks receives. Whoever seeks finds. Whoever knocks the door will be open to him. These are all good literary linguistic devices to help us to learn spiritual truths. Spiritual truths. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. <clears throat> These are called acronyms. My friends, Veronica says, I am practicing silence to hear God's voice, to seek his truth, and to feel peace and joy and more. Thank you again. So true, Veronica. If we don't have silence, then we really can't hear God's voice. Samuel in the temple was in silence and God was speaking to him. And Eli helped him to interpret it and then he said, Speak. He said, Speak, O Lord, for your servant is listening. My friends, uh, this morning we have a lot of oblate priests. So we're going to have a con-celebrated Mass in a few minutes. So I'll have to leave you a little bit earlier today. I'll be back for my, my perseverance in Spanish at 9. But tomorrow will be same time, same channel. But I'll, I'll be praying for all of you when I go to say Mass right now. So the fact that I'm going, will be I'll be praying for all of you right now, for your, all of your intentions. So I'll give you my priestly blessing. You pray for me and I'll pray for you. The Lord be with you. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.